Jason, moving off quarterbacks for just a second, do you like the fit of Jay Gruden to offensive coordinator in Jacksonville? Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I, I don't know, like, that anybody would go there. You know, you, you, you could put Kyle Shanahan there. Like, if the coach is pretty much coming in with his, his butt, you know, in the hot seat, right? Like, no, no one's on a hotter seat. Like, Doug Marone, you know, Dan Quinn, you, you, they, they come in already with, with the owner saying, you know, this is it. Double secret probation is over. Like, you finally, you got to win or I'm not going to just keep you around forever. And then you look at the state of that roster and some of their cap issues, and they're going to have to start gutting the defense, and they've never really had an offense and you're probably stuck with Foles for another year, but that's just a one-year. Everything feels like a one-year limbo, kind of like you're, you're just trying to get through 2020 to start popping yourself up as an organization, you hope, in 2021. I mean, I don't think they've hit rock bottom yet. So, I know, what is Jay going to do? I'm, in, I'm intrigued by Gardner Minshew, but again, I, I, I think they're going to be stuck with Foles, and if you're paying Foles $20 million bucks. You know, you're probably making an argument that he, he could at least fight for that job and have a chance to see the field. I mean, they don't have any tight ends. They, they've got a running back, but he's kind of a plotter. I, I don't know, man. The offensive line is, meh. I think it's a tough gig. Hey, so to, talking to Jason Lockham for Radio.com Sports NFL Insider. Insider calls brought to you by Indeed. Post a job today at Indeed.com slash hire. To get back to kind of the, the quarterback shuffle, Sure, you write about the Brady effect. So if Brady were to leave New England and ends up with a team like the Chargers, I know this is all hypothetical, but you have this yes. fallout, this dominoes of Rivers ends up in Tampa, Jameis goes to Oakland, and Derek Carr ends up with the Redskins? Well... I don't think it's I don't think it's crazy, you know. I, I don't. You look at the way the contract's structured. You could buy him pretty cheap. Um, no, Ron Rivera. I mean, you guys have probably followed it closer to me. Has he made any sort of proclamations that, you know, Haskins is a big part of why I took this job, and you know, Haskins is the is the present and the future, and you know, no, he, he did he's the, the opposite. Guy. He basically did the opposite right? of his presser. Yeah. yeah. And no one's doubting, like, are we, are we doubting that Ron Rivera has a lot of power right now, right? Yeah. Like, he hasn't been there long enough for Dan to neuter him yet. Like, if he's ever going to be able to get exactly what he wants, it's this offseason, right? He's got a completely blank slate. And if, you know, a guy who not that long ago was going to the playoffs with your defensive coordinator and was up for an MVP award and he's still pretty young – and he's on a real team-friendly contract, is all of a sudden out there, and you think you're building a playoff defense because now you got Chase Young along with everything else you've invested in your front seven. Like, if you're trying to build it, that we're going to do what the 49ers did, you can't add any more to your front seven after that. So they're probably thinking we got a pretty good defense. And so, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's kind of connecting dots. It's throwing darts. I'm not reporting anything. I just was like, well, let's say Brady actually leaves. Then how could I see this playing out? And when you get to the point where I know Gruden's not sold on Derek Carr, and whether it's Jameis Winston or whether it's, you know, Tua or, or whatever they, they might be thinking about doing there, Herbert, maybe it's Andy Dalton, I mean, a bunch of different ways they could go. Cam Newton, if they do something that they think is different or better than Carr, then, again, Carr is very tradable. So then you start looking at, well, what would be the potential market for Carr? Who would know him best? Who would, you know, who would politic for him? Who would think, hey, you know, he, he does complete 70% of his passes. And, yeah, he's got some warts, but, you know, he, he, he can play a little bit. And $19 million ain't breaking the bank. You know. How for, and how, you could restructure it. You could easily restructure it. If you're saying, well, we're still carrying Alex Smith, right, and that's a big nut. Right. Well, Haskins isn't, isn't costing you anything. And you could restructure Carr simply and get his cap number down. So, I don't know. Food for thought. Yeah, I, I didn't watch every, every Raider game start to finish, but when I did watch him, it, just looking at Gruden's face, he looked like he was really frustrated. Now, not just with Carr, yeah. but I'm sure Carr had a lot to do with it. Yeah, I mean, I, he feels like Derek Carr is a good quarterback, right? But I got a 10-year contract. Um, we're moving to Vegas. I've got full autonomy. I've gotten rid of most of what I've inherited. And and I don't, and good is not – and Gruden is, is, is meticulous, and he, he's, he's hard on quarterbacks as a rule. When it's not his guy, a guy he didn't pick, he's even, you know, more of a taskmaster. And I think he, he's looking for somebody who, like, say what you want about Jameis. Like, it can be a disaster, but it can also be, 
like he'll push the ball downfield so much that a lot of amazing stuff will happen too. And I know that Gruden's frustrated that with his legs and with his, his arm, that car is so risk averse that I, I think that's where kind of the rubber's hitting the road. 